Time now for Inside Out as Vincent Mercogliano, who covers the Rangers for the USA Today Network and LowHud.com, joins us from Madison Square Garden. And Vincent, we'll get to the game in a minute, but let's start with that potential deal for Patrick Kane. There seems to be a lot of moving parts involved. What parts have been moved and what parts still need to be moved? Eamon, it has been a scramble. And I mentioned this last time I came on the show. I don't think the Rangers thought it was possible to add both Kane and Vladimir Tarasenko until really this past week. So what we've seen now is they've had to move a lot of different things around to make it work salary cap wise. Once it became clear that for Kane, it was New York or bust and that that was going to drive Chicago's asking price down, the Rangers felt like they had no choice but to go for it. And they made the moves on Saturday to trade Vitaly Kratsov and waive Jake LeCision, which at the time seemed to clear the path. But then there was a complicating factor of Ryan Lindgren getting injured in that game on Saturday. The Rangers were forced to recall Ryan Carpenter for tonight's game. But you saw the Rangers, they didn't use Carpenter at all, and they didn't use Braden Schneider at all. And right after the game, we just got the news a little while ago that they have sent Braden Schneider down to the AHL. Now, what that does is through the salary cap accrual process, Monday and Tuesday, the Rangers will be able to add enough salary cap room that by Wednesday, it looks like they will be able to make the Kane deal official. Professor Mercogliano, please don't give any of us a quiz on all that that you just information you just gave us. Uh, now to the action on the ice, and the Blue Shirts desperately needed this win. What were they able to fix on the fly after losing badly on Saturday? Well, they had to play the game shorthanded. I mentioned they had two guys on the bench in Carpenter and Schneider that they weren't even able to use. Keandre Miller gets kicked out of the game in the first period for that spitting incident. And then Mika Zibanejad gets hit with that shot in the ankle. Everybody in the, re in the arena, I think, thought that looked like a serious injury. He comes back for the third period. I thought that really gave the team a nice emotional boost. It was kind of a Willis Reed moment for him. And the Rangers rallied. They really gutted this one out, and they needed it. They had lost four in a row. And I think the big thing that they stressed after the game was how they were able to simplify. Because they were playing shorthanded, they didn't try to do anything too crazy out there. They just tried to keep things simple, cut down the turnovers, and it worked out for them tonight. All right, you mentioned the spitting incident with uh, Keandre Miller. What was the explanation afterwards about what happened and what could the fallout be? Everything I'm hearing is that it was an accident. Keandre feels really bad about it. Apparently, him and Drew, Drew Doughty, the guy who got the spit in the face, met up after the game. I'm told it was a good conversation and they smoothed things over. So Keandre apparently feels really bad and is saying that it was an accident. All right, the Rangers will be in Philadelphia on Wednesday to play the Flyers. Who knows? Maybe Patrick Kane will be on the ice with them. Vincent Mercogliano, thanks for joining us here on Honda Sports Night.